capital is necessary for the growth of a nation. The process of capital formation is initiated through channelization of savings into investment opportunities. This process entails three basic activities, namely savings, that is excess resources as separated and provided to the market, finance, that is the activity of assembling such excess resources and modified for disposal to investors. And thirdly, investment, that is the process of utilization of resources into further resource creation through production. The entire chain or process can be seen as an integrated one rather than a fragmented process because it is this very process that defines the extent and quality of capital formation that takes place in the economy. It is thus important to understand efficacy of a financial system and its classification. With the establishment of a financial structure, economic development of the nation becomes vibrant as this system or structure helps in bridging the gap between the saving rich or surplus avenues to saving deficit avenues. Financial system helps in dealing with the problems that arise in resource mobilization and also helps in mitigating various risks that exist while bringing together suppliers and demanders of funds and resources. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the importance and structure of financial systems in general. The classification of financial systems into markets, institutions and instruments will give you a perspective of how the system operates. Capital formation is necessary for a nation to develop. Financial systems play an important role in making excess funds in the form of savings to be utilized by investors who are in constant demand for funds. This leads to capital creation without the existence of financial systems. This process would leave the gap between suppliers and demanders of loanable funds. The word intermediary is self-explanatory. The role of financial intermediary is to act as connect between the providers of the funds and the people who lack such funds. In case of absence of such an intermediary, the demand and supply would purely depend upon the sheer co coincidence of wants or interest between two parties. The coexistence of such interests is nearly impossible to give the size of the population and the needs of the people. The prominence of a financial intermediary is defined in the context of capital formation through its ability to modify an existing obligation or contract into some other form of contract with completely varying features from its pre-existing form. This process has been termed as transmutation effect. A simple example of this could be a bank as intermediary which lends funds 
to a single large entity for long term with high interest rate and provides him or her funds out of the savings collectivized from small depositors of short term funds at lower interest rate. The obligation of bank is different as compared to the obligation it has enforced upon the borrower and hence it manages to mitigate several risks and lags involved and also manages to earn profits. They make different types of contracts with lenders and borrowers separately. That is called tailoring of contracts. Apart from the function of customization of contracts or claims, financial intermediaries also provide certain other facilities which are equally important. Intermediaries make it convenient for a saver to park funds into easily divisible forms of instruments. This gives a greater flexibility to a saver depending upon his needs and quantum of surplus he or she has. Along with this the convenience is also in terms of maturity of such instruments which vary from short term to long term again depending upon the customer's needs. Secondly, through financial innovation, intermediaries also help in lowering the extent of risk through the ability of diversification of investment activities. Diversification helps in spreading the risk through multiple investments or a portfolio of investments that are undertaken keeping in mind the risk and return attitude of each such investment. Thirdly, intermediaries also possess the expertise of managing funds due to availability of vast knowledge and trained staff. The expanse of transactions makes it possible for the financial intermediary to reduce cost and economize which might not be possible for individual parties in the absence of such intermediary. Now we can classify the financial system in three broad categories. Financial intermediaries, financial markets and financial assets or instruments. This is a pictorial representation of the intricate financial system which contains further categorization of the three broad categories of the financial system that is financial intermediaries, financial market, financial assets or instruments. First, we will discuss the financial intermediaries. Intermediaries are parties which bring together people with excess funds and people with deficit or who are in need of funds. Intermediaries have this ability to modify and customize the contracts depending upon the parties of the contract. This specialization of customizing contracts is termed as tailoring of contracts. There are some other benefits also which include convenience, lower risk, expert management and economies of scale. Financial intermediaries can be further classified into bank, non-banking financial companies, mutual funds and insurance organizations. One simple example of financial intermediary is of a bank where people with excess funds deposit money and people in demand of money take loans from the bank. 
the demand for funds has expanded. Corporate also seeks funds to finance larger projects. Banks also provide differentiated saving opportunities to diversify. As an important intermediary, banks in India have been trusted with several roles like servicing the priority sector, export units and MSME. The non-banking financial companies or NBFCs are the next common type of financial intermediary. There is a wide range of NBFCs on the basis of the assets they deal in or the type of services they provide. These are asset finance companies, housing finance companies, venture capital funds, merchant banking organizations, credit rating agencies, factoring and forfeiting companies, stock broking firms and depositories. Mutual funds is the collectivization of funds from people who are willing to diversify their portfolio of investments. Mutual funds invest into several areas on behalf of their investors and provide them with common units. Through mutual funds, investors get an opportunity to diversify and spread the risk involved by bringing in greater liquidity to their funds. Through this, they also reduce their cost of operation. With the existence of uncertainty in occurrence events, risk also prevails alongside. Insurance corporations provide a cover against such risks. Insurance companies take a small charge from their investors in the form of premium to cover against the risk and identify the investor on the basis of the event. By this method, the risk gets passed from the investor to the insurance company. Insurance has gained importance and there are several products available for several types of risk. The following are the types of Financial intermediaries 3.1.1 Commercial banks The most prominent type of financial intermediary is a bank. Their primary function is to collect savings as deposits and use these deposits to provide loans to the producers and investors of projects to finance corporate capital requirements. The deposits are liabilities of bank and the loans advanced are the assets of the bank. Initial banking activities were restricted to self-liquidating credit creation where the deposits were repaid by investments which could easily balance out. At later stages, banks have diversified their investments to capital market and large infrastructure projects apart from retail and consumer loans. Reach of banks have been extended, especially in India, into rural areas through proprietary sector lending. Banks in India are important channel for financial inclusion 3.1.2 non-banking financial companies these are the institutions providing advisory and management services in financial world the following are its types asset finance companies for example Birla Sun Life Asset Management and LNT Finance Limited. Housing finance companies, for example, HDFC, IHFC, LIC Housing Finance Limited. Venture Capital Funds, for example, Sequa Capital Chess Dial. Merchant Banking Organization, for example, SBI, Yes Bank, Edelweiss Capital. Credit rating agencies, for example, 
Chrysal, Ikra, Fitch Moody's. Factoring and forfeiting companies, for example, SBI Global Factors Limited. Stock broking firms, for example, Angel Broking, Motilal Oswal Depositories, for example, National Securities Depository Limited. 3.1.3 Mutual Funds Institutions. These institutions specialize in diversification of investment. They collectivize the funds of small savers into well diversified portfolios of investment with varying risks and returns. Each investor is issued units that is securities referred as unit holders that is investors on the basis of their quantum. The organizational setup of a mutual fund institution is in the form of a trust which includes a sponsor, trustees, asset management company and custodian. Trustees with power of superintendence monitor the working and compliance as per SEBI. AMC manages funds and investments. For example, BNP Paribas Equity Fund, DSP BlackRock, Billa Sun Life Mutual Fund. 3.1.4 Insurance Organizations. The functioning of an insurance company involves accepting savings of policyholders, that is, premium, and promising a specified sum at a later stage, that is, maturity of the insurance policy, or upon happening of an event, that is, death or damage. The main consideration here is the protection of the interest of the policyholder, whose money investments are to be closely regulated with specific terms and norms of exposure. Insurance companies are readily able to convince savers by creating a desire through motives specifically to assist creation of an emergency fund to protect family, build up family estate except in case of demise of breadwinner, accumulation of specific desired amount by the age of retirement. Contractual nature comes in handy as risk or claim is delayed which gives ample time to mitigate this risk. Family protection needs also leads to increase in frequency and quantum of investment causing systematic avoidance of risk by the saver. For example, ICICI Prudential, LI, LIC, GIC, UIC, Bharti Exa, IFCO Tokyo. The next component of financial system is financial markets. This market is classified on the basis of the nature of instruments they deal in. There are two types of markets, money market and capital market. Look at the money market. What is the definition? It's a market for short term borrowing. Maturity period anywhere from 1 hour to 90 days. Credit instruments include certificate of deposit, 
repurchase agreements, commercial papers, euro dollar deposits, federal funds, municipal notes, treasury bills, money funds, foreign exchange swaps, short lived mortgage and asset backed securities. Nature of credit instruments, homogeneous instruments with similar nature. Purpose, short term credit required for small investments. Basic rule, liquidity adjustment amongst institutions. Dealing institutions, central banks, commercial banks, acceptance houses, non-bank financial institutions, bill brokers, etc. Risk, risk is small. Market regulations, commercial banks are closely regulated to prevent occurrence of a liquidity crisis. Relations with the central banks closely related to the central banks of the country. Similarly, we can now go in for the capital market. That is, it is a market for long term borrowing. It lasts for more than one year and can also include lifetime of a company. Stocks shares, debentures, bonds, securities of the government. Heterogeneous, a lot of varieties are required. Long term credit required to establish business, expand business or purchase fixed assets. Effective employment of capital stock exchanges, commercial banks and non-bank institutions such as insurance companies, mortgage banks, building societies etc. Risk here is greater. Institutions are regulated to keep them from defrauding customers. Indirectly related with central banks and fields fluctuations depending on the policies of the central banks. Money market is a market for short term funds with maturity lasting up to one year depending upon the type of instrument. Investors engaged in the market enter with an outlook to adjust their short term liquidity obligation. The capital market on the other hand is the market for long term capital funds which help in creating long-term fixed assets. It can be further broken down into market for primary or fresh funds and market for secondary funds. This table helps us understand the basic differences between the money markets and the capital markets. The final classification of the financial system is on the basis of financial assets or instruments. Several types of instruments are issued across the wide range of institutions that deal with it. Instruments can also be further classified on the basis of liquidity they generate, the safety of investors money involved in them, the quantum of return they provide and the amount of tax benefit they accrue. Primary instruments include common equity shares issued by the companies where the shareholders receive a dividend and become the owners of the company. Debentures are loans issued by the company on which they pay a fixed rate of interest on regular basis. A third form of instruments which lie somewhere in between equity shares and debentures are called the preference shares. Equity shares versus preference shares. Point of differences equity shares and preferences shares. Let's look at the meaning of the two. Meaning, equity shares are those shares 
who do not enjoy any preferences as regards payments of dividend and repayment of capital. On the other hand, preferences shares are those shares which enjoy preference as regards payment of dividend and repayment of capital rate of dividend. In case of equity shares, rate of dividend on these shares is not fixed. It fluctuates as it depends on the profits made by a company that is higher the profits, higher the dividends, lower the profits, lower the dividends. It depends upon the decision of the board of directors and profits. On the other hand, for preference shares, the rate of dividends on these shares is fixed. Payment of dividend. Dividend on equity shares is paid after the payment of dividend made to preference shareholders. On the other hand, preference shareholders have a preference over equity shareholders in regard to refund of capital in case of winding up of the company, repayment of capital. On winding of the company, equity shareholders get refund of capital only after preference shareholders have been paid off. Preference shareholders have a preference over equity shareholders in regard to refund of capital in case of winding up of the company. Risk. The primary risk bearers of the company. In case of preference shareholders, risk involved is comparatively less. Investor profile. Suitable for bold, high risk taking investors. Suitable for cautious and conservative investors. Face value. Generally, lesser face value. In case of preference shareholders, generally higher face value. Voting rights. Equity shareholders have voting rights in all matters. Preference shareholders can vote only in special circumstances. Redemption. Equity shareholders cannot be redeemed during the life of the company. Preference shares can be redeemed as per terms of issue. Premium on redemption. Equity shareholders do not have the right to receive premium on redemption, whereas preference shareholders are entitled to receive premium on redemption. This table highlights some common differences between equity shares and preference shares. The difference lies on the basis of meaning, rate of dividend, payment of dividend, repayment of capital, risk investor profile, face value, voting rights, redemption and premium on redemption. Common type of derivatives include forwards. It is an agreement to exchange asset for cash at a predetermined future date. They are private bilateral contracts carrying default risk and is unique in terms of expiry, size and asset involved. These contracts need to be settled on or before expiry and cannot be further traded. Futures. It is an agreement 
between two counterparties to fix exchange or lock in price today for a future exchange such contracts are tradable and standardized in nature contracts involve a seller shorts and buyer longs where the former obliges to deliver asset to the latter a general futures contract has a maturity varying from 3 to 21 months some common futures contracts include commodity financial futures stock index futures interest rate and currency futures here there is no deliverable asset and these derivatives are cost effective in terms of hedging options unlike future an option is an obligation rather a right to buy that is call option or sell that is put option at a pre specified price called the strike or exercise price the right is usually only if price of security rises above that is call or falls below that is put the exercise price buyers of an option pay the seller an option premium and have only this premium to lose in case of non exercise of right options are provided for commodities currencies stocks interest rate instruments and even futures the opposite of primary or fresh instruments are indirect securities these are either resold or are repackaged indirect securities are generally issued by mutual fund corporations insurance companies or assets management companies derivatives as the name suggests is an instrument which derives its value from an underlying asset the underlying could be in the form of physical asset like bullion agricultural commodity and even cattle stock underlying could also be an instrument like equity share or government security three most prominent derivatives are forwards contract futures contract and options let us now summarize what we have studied in this module financial organization helps in capital formation and through transmutation process by channelizing savings into investments organization of financial system can be further divided into financial intermediaries financial markets and financial instruments financial intermediaries include commercial banks non banking financial corporations mutual funds and insurance organizations financial markets are categorized into money market short term funds and capital market long term funds financial instruments can be of three types primary securities like equity shares preferential shares and debentures indirect direct securities like mutual funds insurance policy deposit certificates etc and derivatives like forwards futures and options in this module you have learned about the role of financial institutions in capital creation and the different types of classification of financial systems that is financial intermediaries financial markets and financial instruments